Hello, it's me, Ed Bird, and it's time for another viewer question and answer session. So loads and loads of you have been sending questions into me. It's starting to get quite tough to answer all of them in the sort of level of detail that I really want to. I don't like giving sort of half-baked answers on stuff. I like to try and answer your questions in a, an appropriate manner. So I picked out a few that I've received this week that need a little more explanation. Oh, I need some more drink. Ah, that's better. So first off, lots of viewers have been sending in questions about the Pegasus Turbo 2. I really love this shoe. I tell you what, just getting it out of the box and kind of throwing it around in my hands, it reminds me of just how light it is. It's a ridiculously light shoe. I think some huge price reductions have prompted a number of you to consider buying this fantastic tempo shoe. Matty Frizz over on Instagram asked me whether he should stick with a Pegasus 36 for his kind of nine minute per mile sessions or he should shell out and get the Pegasus Turbo 2. I think for me the Pegasus 36 is a somewhat more versatile shoe, a more daily kind of trainer. It's certainly a more reachable price point for money. But that aside, I have seen the Pegasus Turbo 2 reduced down to just over hundred pounds, so there's not really an awful lot in it. That Turbo 2 is a little bit narrower here in the arch. That's the only major thing, that's a major concern I have, Matty. Um, if you go for this one, it could be that the fit isn't quite right for you. I found there was loads of space here in the forefoot. Look at that. You could fit a small family of field mice into this shoe here. At higher paces, certainly the Turbo 2 is one I would grab for straight away. If you're doing some perhaps lower paces, I think probably the Pegasus 36 will do you. Beast, I'm trying to record here. Well, come on, come in then. Oh. At a US size nine though, there's quite a considerable weight difference here. 8.9 ounces for the Pegasus 36 and 7.2 ounces for the Pegasus Turbo 2. All in all, it's about 50 grams difference per shoe. That's quite a lot. I think for tempo runs, maybe even some racing, I would go for the Pegasus Turbo 2 if you can, Matty. If it fits and if you can get it at a good price point. Hope that answers your question. Another Pegasus Turbo 2 question received from Alex Thurman over on YouTube. He finds the New Balance 1080 V10 a fast shoe, but he doesn't find it particularly supportive. He's wondering whether he should get the Pegasus Turbo 2 as an additional shoe in his rotation for sort of easier, longer sessions and faster race pace type sessions. I found after so many miles that the Zoom X starts to bottom out around about here in the Pegasus Turbo 2. It was normally around about 12, 30 miles. I didn't really want to run any more than that in it, but I know loads of people do. I mean, people have run marathons in this shoe. But for me, certainly, I just felt it started to bottom out a little bit. It kind of lacks a little bit of rigidity that you might want on a longer race. I think if you did have your heart set on getting a turbo, I would go for the Pegasus 35 turbo. I know a number of people found the Pegasus 35 turbo a lot more supportive with those fly wires coming in around the midfoot. Myself, personally, I found the Pegasus Turbo 2 a more of a supportive shoe in that aspect. I kind of loved everything about it. For tempo runs up to about 10, 12 miles for me, this was superb. Size 9 US of these is about 204 grams. I think perhaps the Pegasus Turbo could be quite a reasonable addition to a rotation alongside the New Balance 1080 V10. V10 comes in about 269 grams in a US size 9. So again, there's quite a big difference there in terms of weight. I think if you want something for faster tempo sessions, you want to race in this perhaps, go for it. There's loads and loads of good deals on the Pegasus Turbo 2 right now. I saw one pair the other day around about 100 pounds. So certainly a good time to be in the market for them. Whether they are gonna persist with this model though, remains to be seen with the Tempo Next Percent coming out very soon. Hope that answers your question, Alex. Kung Fu Lu over on YouTube asks, should you go for the Pegasus Turbo 2 or the Nike Infinity Run? Really need to clean this shoe. Big, big weight difference here again between the two shoes. That Pegasus Turbos are more up on the forefoot kind of higher paced trainer. Well, I'd perhaps suggest though that this is a more versatile shoe. I'm not sure you'd want to wear the Pegasus Turbo day in, day out. This one's going to be great for daily kind of training, all sorts of stuff. I even heard of people using this around the house. Somebody said today on the channel that it kind of looks like a mermaid's shoe. Well, in that case, I'm a mermaid. I think lockdown on the top of the Pegasus Turbo 2, though, is a hell of a lot better than on the Infinity Run. You've got to make sure you get the sizing right on this one. We don't want any of that heel slippage business. I've not experienced it, but many, many of you out there have. 
Certainly that Pegasus Turbo 2 with its React and Zoom X midsole is the more forgiving of the two shoes. I think perhaps it's even too soft depending upon your foot strike. As I say before, at present the Pegasus Turbo 2 is on offer all over the internet and that could perhaps present a better value option right now but that aside, it's a shoe that's going to push you to run a hell of a lot faster and you don't always want to do that. Remember, run slow to race fast. Remember, tools for different runs, horses for courses. So two very different shoes. It's hard to say yes for one or the other. I think they could perhaps both fit into a rotation. Hope that answers your question, Kung Fu Lu. Roxman asks, should he size up by a half size in the Nike Infinity run if he has a wider foot? I personally would advise against this. This is quite a wide shoe, certainly up in the forefoot area here. The arch is kind of tight. You will certainly feel that heel clip. It comes right the way round, extends round through to the midfoot area. I think if you did size up by a half size, you might get some of that heel slipping. And that is certainly the Achilles heel of this shoe. Terrible joke. Only a true physical on foot test of sizing will be an efficient and effective way to make sure that you get it right with this shoe. Joe Mullen has a volley of questions to ask me. So first up, he's got, uh, does looking at others' times motivate me, uh, make me jealous and stuff like that over on Strava? Um, I would suggest they don't make me jealous really. I kind of set my own goals and I like to try and celebrate other people's achievements as well. I think getting into a sort of jealous state, certainly with running, is just crazy. There's always going to be somebody that's faster than you out there. But I'd say it certainly does motivate me. I, I kind of set goals, I look at other runners, perhaps with similar abilities, and say, hey, I want to get there. So second question, if I could only choose one distance to run for the rest of my life, what would it be? I think it would probably be a half marathon distance, so you know, around about 21 kilometers. I think it demands good pacing, a mixture of strength, speed and endurance, both physical stamina and mental toughness. I think that would probably be the race of choice. It's kind of with a half marathon, you kind of get into it and there's a certain point when you start to think, oh, hang on a minute, this is starting to hurt. But you've got to have that mental toughness, uh, but also you can include some speed in there as well. So I think that'll probably be my favorite discipline in running. So Joe Mullins asked some good questions. So third question, if I was told one day I'd have to stop running forever, what would I do? Well, firstly, I hope that day never comes. But if it did, I think I'd set about designing and creating and curating my own Ed Bud run. I think I'd design a race, not sure, maybe something I could take across the world, across Europe, over into America, into Canada, over to Australia. Maybe a half marathon, maybe aim for something that was really great for PRs. I think that'd just be a fantastic thing to do, actually curate a race. Hmm, watch this space. Okay, that's just about all the time I've got for today. There's still loads more coming up this week, guys. We've got the first initial review of the Evo ride, and I have a special guest. I've got a half marathon training recap a little later in the week, and also my initial views on the Osprey Daylight Plus. Certainly been enjoying that bag, You'll get my initial views on it later this week. It's time for me to disappear. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you get told when the new videos launch. Hit the like button and share with your running buddies. Make sure you comment below with any more questions you've got. You know I love viewer questions. I do try and answer every single comment that I can. If I do miss someone, it's not personal, I assure you. Thanks for watching through to the end, guys. My name's Ed Bird and I'll be seeing you.